Hello everyone, I am Anigit Pradhan and today we'll be talking about Neurofedora. So, talking about Neurofedora, it's a special interest group in Fedora that we have been working on. So, before we talk about Neurofedora, so let's just talk about some other things that we have in our slide deck over here that is basically starting with, we are starting, with, we are going to start off with open science. So, like basically like what open science is and so open science, it's very similar to what open source is, open software that is like open, basically that science should be transparent and knowledge should be accessible and shared and it should be developed through collaborative networks and other things. So everyone should have the freedom to study, modify and share their scientific material. So basically it applies to all the scientists, academics, students, researchers, and basically like almost everyone that, who ha that have access to the scientific information. Right, so irrespective of the social status, age, location. So that's what we call open, that's what we refer to what open science is. So other than that, so we know what open science is now, but like what is neuroscience? What is Neurofedora based on? So neuroscience, as you have guessed probably, it's the study of the brain. So we study different aspects about it. That is like basically how the brain functions how it is structured it's the anatomy of the brain and everything right so the chemicals inside the brain there are a lot of chemicals maybe that falls under the domains of pharmacology and biochemistry and how it processes information so that goes to the computational uh, neuroscience bit over there so about the behaviors and cognition that is the behavioral and cognitive neuroscience and that's it so this is what neuroscience is. We study all these different aspects about the brain. So basically now let's just talk about how we actually do that. So, so to do that, we have a lot of tools and there's a whole pipeline and workflow. So we all start with like data analysis, then we go to theory, then modeling, then experimental work. So it's actually a very simplified diagram, but it's very complex because you could probably just go from data analysis to modeling directly and skip the theory in between. So I mean, you not obviously skip the theory, but like with the with the with the availability of tools and, and softwares, you can actually just go to the modeling part. So it's basically a general workflow for almost like all research-based work. So yeah, so that's it. So what are what are the tools of the trade or, or in neuroscience? So it's basically like we have experimental ex experimental softwares that where we include like. On Diacom or image viewers, we have some FSL tools. We have the softwares to drive the big machines, like heavy machines that do the computational work. Other than that, we have some data analysis softwares as well. That is, that just ranges from like simple, from like very simple to very complex libraries, like from NumPy, SciPy, and Scikit-learn TensorFlow. And that's like one of the basics, like that we talk about in neural networks but there are other other lot of other there, there are a lot of data analysis libraries as well we have simulators we have simulators to model how our brain is going to work so for that we have neon or and these were one of the biggest are uh, the biggest uh, computational neuroscience simulators that we have but there are a lot more as i said and so and for theory and that was for theory and modeling other than that, we have lots of hardware and software obviously required. So let's just like summarize what we I have talked about right now. So we have free and open science that everyone should have the freedom to study, share, and modify the scientific material. Similarly, we have FOSS, that's free and open source software. That is, everyone should have the freedom to share, study, and modify software. That's it. So free and open neuroscience, uh, free and open science, it includes and relies heavily upon free and open software because open source software basically because if do, if we don't have the tools, then how are we going to uh, like how are you going to share a, a scientific material, right? So that's why the force is really necessary for free and open science. So with the help of Neurofedora, we are basically just want to consolidate the two movements that is of force and free and open science that we have. So regarding that, we have a very, uh, a very interesting paper that we have. It's a fun paper to hear upon. It's basically based upon like uh, open science and open software. It discusses various aspects of why open software is required and why open, open science is also required. 
it basically discusses about reproducibility crisis where people are unable to reproduce the data or results also it also benefits also like benefits uh, also also has like uh, contains like why we need uh, why what is what are the benefits of open sourcing code like it uh, it helps the community and people can reuse your stuff and they can build upon and improve so your publication becomes an adword for the code so yeah if you have any questions okay yeah, there i saw i can see a few i can see your questions so can we work on a cloud image of the spin oh yes uh david you can actually so that bit is going to come in the slides in a few minutes so yep i would definitely well not on the cloud you can work it or uh, work you can for now like uh use it as a container so I will just tell you on how you can you on what ways you can use the new Fedora spin. It's yeah. So so the neuroscience community is multidisciplinary. There are people from all the all like various fields like, and so basically we are discussing why we need why why do we need new Fedora? So basically only a small proportion of them are trained software developers, and not all of them have the required experience to use or just create a software tool. Right. So this is a basic flowchart on how software is distributed in general. Basically, we have the developers and which provide the code to the end users and the end users, they use it and they provide the feedback to the developers. Right. So this is not always true because there are some issues with the flowchart, if you can see. So we are assuming that the dev, the develop, we are assuming that the developer knows that the end users are knowledgeable. So we are just assuming that the end users are knowledgeable and they know how to use the tool, right? They know how to build it. They know how to test it and how to install it. We, the dev, we are also assuming that the end users would be providing regular feedback to the developers over here. All right. So, so based upon like anecdotal evidence over here, we have like software used in research is not generally of the best quality, right? So it may or may not meet the development standards that you have. It, the code may not have an instruction set on how to install or use the software. The users may also suffer from resolving dependencies and to install the software. So that's a lot of thing that that's a lot of issues over here. Like how can a general, how can a general audience use the highly sophisticated softwares that the developers are creating? Right. So for that, we as NeuroFedora are going to come in between. We are going to liaison between the developers and the end users over here. We will take the code from the developers, just package it in a neat binary and then provide it to the end user directly. So then they can ins install the tool with just one click. Right. So on, other, on the other hand, like if the end users are providing us feedback, that's great. But we will provide our feedback and give that to the upstream developers so that they can follow the best practices that they have. They can test their codes. They can resolve the bugs that if we find any. So basically what we are doing is we are basically simplifying the installation and the usage of the tools for the end users and providing a regular feedback system for the developers over here as well. Right. So distributions like Fedora over here, we are actually in a unique position because we have the infrastructure over here. We have high-end servers. We have multiple mirrors across the globe. We have a firm packaging guideline. We go through a heavy-duty review process, and we test the software before packaging it for the users. So that's a good thing that that we are testing the softwares. And many contributors we are from in Neurofedora. They hail from different backgrounds, and they have a lot to learn as well. So that's a good thing. And furthermore, we are also providing help to the users if they are facing any difficulty installing or using the software. We are there to help them. Why? Because uh, a lot of us are from the neuroscience community, and they have they have the experience on how to use the tools and everything. So, if there any there's, there's anything, then obviously we can help. So about you know Fedora. So what's our primary goal? It's basically to provide a ready to use integrated FOSS platform for neuroscientists. That's yeah, that's pretty much our primary goal over here. And our secondary goals is like basically like helping improve the standards of like of the tools that is there. Like so, we are improving the standards on how to maintain them, how you test them, how you use them. 
We also help users develop their software development skills. And we are basically making neuroscience accessible to everyone, like not just the specialists, but non-specialists over here as well, right? So Neuro Fedora, what are we offering? So let's just talk about that. David, I think I will be answering your question in right now, right? So what we as a SIG are offering to the community, right? So the Comp Neuro Lab that we have, it's a spin of the Fedora OS that helps us enable neuroscience. Right. It has all the neural tools pre-installed, and so it's just easy to use. You just have to install and just start using the tools, and you can just like ready to play, right? So it's packed with analysis and general productivity tools that are used in computational neuroscience. Uh, a few examples of them would be the Nest or the Neuron Simulator that we have. It also has Brian. So Brian is another simulator that we have, and it's heavily used in computational neuroscience. So we have all the big softwares over here. Not all the big, I mean, like we are still in the process, but yeah. And furthermore, it's integrated with GNOME. So GNOME is like known for like the, it's very simple to use uh, desktop environment and it's intuitive and it's simple. So that's why we are integrating it with GNOME and so that like everyone could use it. And the uh, lab that we are offering, we are also offering a uh, comp neuro container. So for people who are using containerized environments, they can just download or pull the container from the Docker hub and just start their development on it. They can deploy clusters on uh, containers or maybe clusters and they can deploy images and clusters so that they could just launch a centralized sort of hub for the for the people for the people who who will be accessing it. So for example, like I work in a lab, I could just like get, I could just pull the container over here. I could just deploy it and I could uh, use Jupyter Lab or I could provide a Jupyter Lab entry point for all the people inside the lab so they can, they can use Nest, that's uh, the simulator. They can just access Nest without any difficulty, right? So you can also use it with Podman and Docker and that's great. So, oh, I see another question that is, do you plan on making the image available on other registries like Quay or GHCF? Um, that I'm not sure. I mean, like it is, as I tested, it is available on the Docker Hub with the Fedora repository, uh, with the Fedora images. We will have to check if it is available on Quay or GHCF. Right, so I'll wait for a few minutes if anyone has any questions. Great. So, right. So I guess I should move on. So Neuro Fedora. So how can you help? So I'm assuming like all of the audience, most of the audience, most of the people in the audience are from technical backgrounds and they could help us with our little group that we have. So they could help us with packaging and maintenance, right? So since our main work is it revolves around like maintaining and maintaining packages and creating packages, uh, creating software packages for people. Then, yeah, I mean, definitely, if there are packages, if there if there are people out there that can help us with it, we would obviously be very glad to help. And other than that, we have the QA test. That is the testing bit that we do. Right. So packages that we provide must like they go through a very heavy duty Fedora QA process. Right. So. You are supposed to pass a review, and then you have to you have automated tests that we have. So either you can help us with the, the the reviews, or you could just simply enable the updates testing repository and just test the tools and like test the updates. And if you see anything that uh, is worthy of reporting, then you could report it to Bugzilla. And that brings us to the third uh, point we have over here: is basically you could file bugs. Right, you can file bugs, you can report issues that you are facing with the packages, right? So bugs can be reported on to the Bugzilla that we have. That is basically the Bugzilla is basically an issue tracker for, that we have for Fedora packages. So any packages that related to any issues related to the packages can be reported just at, over there. Furthermore, any bugs related to the packages, the users can directly go upstream and help them out. So that's one of the big plus that we are working on. <laughs> So, 
other than that, you can also help us improve the user documentation. So it's an important resource and you could just like help us by, you can help us like by contributing or improving our documentation because um, there might be some human error over there and it's not always perfect. So yeah. <laughs> And that you can help other users that we have in our communication channels. So we could basically help them troubleshoot issues. And if they're asking for help, then you can obviously help them out. So there are a lot, there, there are communication channels like on the uh, on IRC, there's one on Telegram and Matrix. So I will get onto that better in the future slides. And the last thing that you could help us by, help us, uh, by is by spreading the word because uh, write about new, you can write about New York Fedora, you can share your opinions about New York Fedora on social media. You could refer us to your friends or colleagues who are working in the neuroscience uh, domain. So that would help us pe help people to know that there's, there's this thing known as New Fedora and they can actually get involved with it as well. Right. So about New Fedora, so it will, our current metrics is basic, are basically as, like as follows. We, we will be three years old in September 2021. That's like next month. We have around 30 volunteer contributors right now. And that is a good thing. And most of them are active, most of them are not. But we would like to, we definitely like to get that number up. We, have to more, we, we would love to have more contributors with us. And for a software, we have around 190 tools packaged and they're ready to install. And some of the recent ones that we have packaged are Neuro, ML Lite, the Pi Neuro ML. All these tools are like heavily known in the neuroscience community and a lot of people use them as well. So it's a, it's a good thing that we are actually having a lot of people that are using them. So we can get like uh, reports and everything as well. So other than that, we have over 200 softwares in the queue already, right? So we have tools like Eden, the, the Neuro Minerva, the Flybrain Lab, the Gen Tools, right? So these are all, again, the heavily known softwares and would love to have help from our volunteers on this, right? So how can you uh, reach, reach out to us. Uh, we have basically a mailing list that is neurosigatlas.fedoraproject.org. We have an IRC channel on Libera chat, that's Fedora Neuro. Uh, we have a Telegram channel as well, uh, and that's the link over here, t.me slash neurofedora. So currently the IRC and the Telegram uh, channel bot is not working. The link about that basically transmits the messages over to one other platforms that is not working. So we usually hang on around the both of the channels. So we will be able to help you on either one of them. Our documentation is available at neuro.fedoraproject.org. Please do visit that. There are lots of users over there. You would love to go through or what all softwares we have, what all softwares we offer and how you can contribute. Uh, we have a blog over here, neuroblog.fedoraproject.org and they publish regular updates about our project, like what we are doing and what what is the current state of the uh, whole SIG. So it's all over there as well. And our pager IO, that is the first Git forge that we have, it's over there, NeuroSig slash NeuroFedora, right? So that's a small group, NeuroSig. So you can just search it over there. And that is the end of slides. If we have any more questions, any comments or anything we we would definitely love to have them over here if there's something i could clarify upon i'd like to just say thank you for attending the session it was amazing thanks a lot for all the people who attended the session it was really great having you all and if there's any question that we can answer please do let us know Thank you, Akash Deep. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you, Shane, for attending. If you have any questions regarding Nero Fedora, if you want to ask anything, literally anything, if what are, what are our plans for future, how are we going about with the containers and with anything, literally. <laughs> so please feel free to ask. Ah, you'll be digging deep in the containers as well. 
Ah, you want to deep learning in as well. Don't we all? <laughs> Oh, well, that would be amazing, like having a deep learning image as well. Like, I am pretty sure the science team, the science sig, well, the robotics sig, no, there was some sig, I forgot the name. Sure, definitely, David, I would love to talk to you as well regarding this. And yes, the machine learning sig, my bad, yes. The machine learning sig is actually working upon something, like they were, they were trying to package some open source tools that are used in for GPU computing and everything. If I remember correctly, there were some tools known as HIP and everything, basically for AMD graphics and everything. So that would be cool to work upon as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, there's a uh, machine learning seg as well, David, that you can probably look up. Um, it's similar to what we are doing over here. They're also trying to import all the uh, tools that are not packaged for Linux and for Fedora, basically, for uh, Fedora, they are trying to cater, they are trying to package everything as well. It's time to join up first. Alberto, hey. So I guess that's the end of the session. If anyone has any questions or anything, please. Oh, well, David, obviously, I mean, <laughs> no worries, Akash, um, we, would, we, we would have done the same if I had known this, that we could, <laughs> sure. Oh, wait, I skipped on to the chat panel. So they, uh, so talking about deep learning, is there can be issues with CUDA packages, right? So any heads up on how and if. Okay, so basically uh, Akash Deep, so we don't, we don't necessarily use packages that use, we don't actually use the, uh, in neuroscience, we don't specifically use packages or to software tools that rely on the GPU, right? So we don't have a hard dependency upon the CUDA libraries as well, right? And as Ankur said, it's a no-go because the, the drivers are not open source, right? So that's another issue that we have. Uh, on the other hand, as I said uh, about the machine learning, so they were they were trying on packaging the HIP libraries that could work with the AMD graphics card series that they have. But then again, it's not optimized as the NVIDIA ones are. So again, it's a big issue that we have. Oh, well, we could probably create a poll on like what desktop environment do you use? Because I was talking about GNOME early over here, but I don't specifically use GNOME over here. I use I use the Plasma desktop, so we could probably have a Neuro Fedora, a spin of Neuro Fedora with the Plasma desktop. So that makes things more amazing. What do you guys feel about it? Please, if you have any comments or anything, please do leave them at the chat. So yeah. See, uh, yeah, I can't be agrees. That could be fun. I'm talking about the Plasma desktop, even an, even a desktop with i3, that would be amazing. <laughs> so that's worth looking into as well. <laughs> Great. So I guess that's the time. Uh, it's uh, my, our 25 minutes are done. So if you guys have any other sessions to go to, as Akash Deep recommended the session, the WA the WA meetup session. I don't know what that is. I'll jump into it as well. So please do attend it. All right. So I'll leave the room. Thank you all for attending. And it's the websites and applications we ran. <laughs> Would love to attend it. Thanks a lot, everyone, for attending. And that is time. So I'll have to close the room as well. See you. Bye-bye.